one thing that I have learned is that if you can be more time efficient, it can change the game for how you feel and how stressed and overwhelmed you are. And so if we can use little tweaks to make ourselves more efficient with the time that we are spending, I'm all for that. So I want to share with you five different tools that have made our meal planning routines and kitchen organization easier. And I want to share those with you today in case they help you too. Because if you can even just take one of these things, it could make a really big difference for your life. And so I want to share those with you today. Are you ready to stop the chaos, the stress, the overwhelm that's filling your life? I'm Renee Matt, and together you and I are going to build simple routines that are going to change your life. When you put these habits into practice, you're going to be able to organize your life in a way where you can be there for your family, pay off your debt, save money, your house can stay organized, you don't have to stress about what's for dinner, and you still get time for yourself. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to the Routine Advantage Podcast. Now, before we get into the tools and the tacticals, I want to share that if you are really struggling trying to come up with what should be in each of your routines, I have a guide that will help you do that. It is an eight-week workbook that will walk you through setting up all of the five core routines that I talk about. So you can go back into the podcast episodes and you can grab whatever you need there. I do talk about them on the podcast, but if you want to hone in and like really build out those five right away and you want to just walk step by step through that, then you can go to yourorganizedlifeblueprint.com and grab the blueprint. You can either grab the PDF download version or you can grab like the actual physical workbook off of Amazon, but that will help you get the five routines set up. That is your morning routine, your meal planning routine, your daily seven home routine, your movement routine, and set you up with your base budget for your budget routine. It's going to walk you through all of those. And then the last portion of it is actually going to walk you through getting your daily schedule template set up that you can create your ideal week with. It is it is really amazing. <laughs> I worked really hard on it and I hope that it is a benefit to you. I've had really great feedback on it. So I'm hoping that that will help you walk through those five routines if you're struggling to get them in place. But for this today, we are actually, it's kind of related to the meal planning routine because it's it's in the kitchen. Um, but because it is also, we're kind of touching on some organization pieces, it could also be part of your daily seven if you are, your daily seven home routine, if you're struggling to maybe keep your kitchen clean too. So there are five tools I want to talk about. And I mean, obviously there's going to be way more than five just in our lives, but these are the five that I really, I really narrowed down and I was like, okay, what are my five like really favorite things that we are currently doing or using that just make a really big difference to just make things easier. So I want to share those with you. So number one, it is a flip calendar with an erasable pen. <laughs> and this one sounds very simple. Uh, and maybe you already have a calendar in your kitchen. But what we do is we have a blank like cardstock calendar. It has the spiral bound so that it lays flat against the wall. And what we have done is we took a little 3M hook and put it inside of one of our cabinets that's easy to reach, but it's out of the way. And we hung it inside the cabinet. And then I have like a little erasable pen. They're like the Pilot Friction pens. I have that like just looped on there. So it's always with it. We don't always, we don't ever lose the pen. And it's on there because that is what we use for our meal planning. If you haven't listened to any of my previous episodes, this is what we do for meal planning because... It's so simple to just jot down your uh, plans for your dinners. You can add breakfasts, lunches. Uh, you can mark off the days that you're going to be gone, that you don't need to make dinner. But it is so quick to meal plan this way. And the benefit of having it on a calendar is that if you get stuck or you're just in the mood where you don't want to decide anything... All you have to do is look back at all of your previous weeks and months and you have tons 
of meal plans. You've got the weekly meal plans, you've got an entire month. If you are just so sick of making decisions, just go copy another month that you have previously done or just change out a couple of things. It is just a game changer on how much easier it makes it to meal plan. And because it's hanging right there, you can just take it off the loop and you can do your inventory and go through your whole meal planning process. And it just makes it so easy. And because you have an erasable pen, it doesn't matter if you write down all of your ideas and something changes because life happens, things change. So if you need to swap a couple of days or if all of a sudden you have, you know, different items in the fridge that you need to use up and so you need to, to change what meal you're going to have, just erase it and rewrite it. Like for me as a, um, a I, I tend to be a perfectionist in certain areas <laughs> and I don't like writing with pens and then having to scribble things out and then it's all messy. I, that doesn't happen because it's erasable and it doesn't matter if I write with a pen, I can just erase it and rewrite something else. And that makes it super easy. And so that is just game changer. I love that one. So number two is a food chopper. And I, I used to really love kitchen gadgets. And as I got older, I was like, oh, they're just taking up too much space. Like, I want to go back to the basics. And so I would consider this food chopper to be a gadget. However, it is a gadget that is necessary. <laughs> I love our food chopper. And I, I, so we have the one, it's not um, like one of the ones that you pound. Um, it's not like the standing one kind of like the old Pampered Chef one that you, you used to be able to get. This one is like all over social media. It has a clear container on the bottom and it's like this rectangular chopper. And so it has this clear container on the bottom and on the top it like opens like a mouth. And so you lift it up and then you put a grid on the top that pushes the food down. And then on the bottom there are grid blades and you can use two different sizes. They're like really tiny diced and then just like a medium dice. And you can get other attachments like your, you know, zucchini, noodler, like all those things too. But we use it for the little grid blades and it is phenomenal. It makes just meal prepping or veggie prepping or cooking just so much easier you guys it's like the little ones we chop for like onions and we'll put like fruit in there when we're like bottling our kombucha like you you don't have to sit there and dice all these little things all you do is you take a big chunk of something you put it on the top and then you put the the top down and you smash it with your hand <laughs> and you like pound it with your hand and it just goes through the blades you can chop like a whole container of uh fruit like strawberries and um even watermelon you could do on there you can do like potato chunks you can do don't do sweet potatoes because it, it gets a little hard <laughs> but you could do um potatoes you can do green peppers you know, all sorts of vegetables. We even did lettuce in there once just to try it. And it all works really fantastic. And it takes like seconds. So if you are somebody that doesn't like standing over the counter and chopping a lot, uh, I highly recommend getting yourself a good food chopper. I want to say it was like $30 or something like that on Amazon. And it is awesome. And if you have kids helping you, I mean, you have to make sure that they don't have the little blades like with their hands, but it's easy enough for them to set the the produce down onto it and then you just close the lid and then they can hit it with their hand and it just makes it so quick and easy it actually makes cooking more fun because you get to pull out the chopper and it's easy to clean so that is definitely a highlight in our kitchen number three is produce containers now these are the produce containers that go in the fridge these are phenomenal. So we have um, clear ones. So we were able to get them. If you have an Aldi near you, they do these seasonally, but you can get some on Amazon or wherever, you know, they sell, you know, kitchen organization stuff, but it's basically 
clear containers that are vented and they also have a tray on the bottom so they can catch any extra moisture and keep it away from the produce. And I will mention that uh, my sister, we had tried doing this for her, getting her some, and the baskets inside of hers, like hers were full on baskets, but because they weren't clear, you couldn't really see inside of them, so they didn't work super well for her. But what we have, we were able to get at Aldi and they just had them seasonally and we just stocked up on a bunch of them and they had different sizes and it, they're like all clear on the whole um, top and on the sides. The tray is only on the bottom and the vents are only on, you know, each end. So it made it super easy. But if you come across veggie produce containers like this, they are awesome because what you can do is when you get home from your grocery shopping and you're doing your veggie prep to get things, you know, chopped and cleaned and, and in the fridge for the week, they allow you to fill up all these fresh vegetables and have them in your fridge so they are already prepared. So not only can you go and snack on them and it's easier to have fresh, crisp veggies to snack on, they're also already prepped. So if you have a stir fry, all you have to do is go grab some of your, you know, broccoli that's already chopped and maybe some peppers and just slice up your peppers and then throw them in and you're good to go. Like it just makes it so nice to have them in the fridge. And then what we do is we just clean them all out. And if there's any left at the end of the week, we'll make sure that we either use up those veggies in our fridge sweep days um, or we just keep snacking on them and then uh, we just wash them and reuse them on the next uh, cycle of meal planning. So when we get home with groceries, we just do that same thing. So I'm only refreshing them once a week and because they're in these containers and they're being stored properly, they actually last a really long time. So some of our vegetables can actually make it two weeks and they are perfectly fine even after two weeks where if we didn't have them prepped in these containers they would never last that long they would be rotting and moldy way before then so they have just made a huge difference not only in the ease of preparing meals and having all that stuff done ahead of time and just doing it once and being done for the whole week but they also save money because they are keeping our produce good longer and we use them for everything from lettuce to peppers to broccoli to um like strawberries blueberries um herbs all those things like we use them for these and they work really really well uh okay so let's go on we have number four is clear bins and containers now this is for like organization so this is like if you are going in your cupboards and you've got like just tons of baking ingredients and maybe you've got your flours and your sugars and they're in the bags and they're kind of spilling because when you fold it over, it kind of puffs out everywhere. When you can get clear containers that you can see what's in it, you can see how full everything is and they stack up nicely, it makes a big difference in how you feel when you open the cabinets and the cupboards. This has been so nice like for our baking ingredients and then if you don't want to spend the money on like clear containers, you could also use jars. You can repurpose jars like if you are buying snacks or anything from the grocery store that has a really nice jar, uh, just grab those for now and you can fill those. So we used the repurposed jars for like our quinoa and rice and things like that. And then we have like the clear bins that we have gotten from Amazon that are more for like all those little baggies of like salad toppings. You've got like your croutons and your tortilla strips and your craisins and sunflower seeds, all those types of things. They have all those little bags that get kind of messy. So we just have a little clear bin that has all our salad toppings in it and then it's in the cupboard. And so when we need it, all you have to do is grab the bin and pull out what you need. It just makes it look so much cleaner. You can also use these containers containers for um, different snacks, measuring cups, whatever. Um, if you have like a blender and you have a bunch of different attachments, throw them in a bin and you can put them in the cupboard. It just makes everything cleaner and easier. And when you open the cupboard, it doesn't all fall down at you. It just makes a big difference. Um, number five, this is the last one. It is a backup box. 
And what I mean by this, this is a little confusing. What I mean by this is when you are going through your cupboards or cleaning out your uh, cabinets, what you want to do is you can go back and actually a few episodes back, I had a um, an episode on organizing and organizing any space and decluttering any space. And one of the things in there was talking about your, your routine of going through and organizing something. And I had referenced uh, the kitchen cabinet in that episode, but you can use it for any space, but it works really well for your kitchen cabinets like this. When you go through this process, do it with your like storage areas, like your pans, your big platters, like serving utensils, serving trays, all these different things in your kitchen that are being stored in your kitchen. Now we have a small kitchen, so it makes a big difference. Um, Maybe you have a big kitchen and this isn't an issue, but if you are kind of running out of room in your kitchen, what we did with a small kitchen is we went through our cabinets and even our drawers and all of our utensils and everything. And we pulled out everything. And then we picked from that stuff only what we needed and what we wanted to keep in the kitchen that we use often. If we didn't use it often and we were keeping it, because some of it got donated, but if we were keeping it, but we didn't use it often, we put it in a backup box and we put it down in our basement. It's super easy to get to and we have it if we need it but it's out of our kitchen. It's out of the space that we're working in all the time. So it simplifies and minimizes what is in our kitchen. It makes it feel cleaner. It makes it feel more organized. It's easier to keep clean. And it just, it it settles your nerves about getting rid of things if you're not sure. Like I'm definitely one of those people that are like, oh, what if I need it? And We've been holding on to things for years and we've never needed them. So we're like, I think we can get rid of some of this stuff. So we we did a whole big donation drop off, but some of the stuff we did keep. And there were a lot of even utensils and those little gadgets that we have been holding on to. And it's like, they're taking up space in our drawer. Our drawer is getting full and we don't use them all the time. So what we did is we did this backup box and we put everything that we don't use often in the box and put it down in the basement. So that if we come across a time where we need it, we know exactly where it is. We can just go grab it and it'll take two seconds. But when we go through that backup box, when it comes time to go through that shelf from our annual task list, which is in a previous episode as well, when we have our time to go through the shelf, we will come across that box and we will be able to pull out whatever is needed. Now, if we decide to keep things, We'll just keep them in that box. But if we are looking at that box, what we could do is grab only the things we want to keep and then we can donate the rest. And that just makes it so much less stressful on trying to keep everything organized, but also stressed about what to get rid of and what to keep in case you need it someday. That just kind of reduces that anxiety about getting rid of things, but yet it still gets it out of your kitchen. And then you have a time frame of when you will go back through and decide if you really want to keep it or not, because you don't have to make that big decision right away. Just put it in your backup box, get it out of your kitchen. You might even forget that you have it and then you know it's a good sign to donate it. And those are the five tools that I think are super helpful. I hope at least one of these is helpful for you, but I would love to know what you think. Come and share it in our Facebook community. It's a free community. You can come join us in there. It's facebook.com slash groups slash the routine advantage community and come and tell me which one that you loved most or which one you're going to use or try or if you're going to use all five of them. So I'll recap them for you so um, that you can go through and decide which one or which ones (laughs) you're going to try um, first. So number one is a wall calendar and an erasable pen and add a 3M hook if you want to do the same thing that we're doing. Number two, get yourself a good food shopper. Number three, produce containers. I prefer the clear vented ones that have a tray at the bottom to keep any moisture off of your produce. Number four is clear bins or containers or even jars to organize the ingredients that you have like quinoa, rice, flour, sugar, things like that. And 
the bins to help organize snacks and salad toppings and even measuring cups, things like that, to keep things organized in a space and all in one spot. Number five is to have a backup box where you can take any extra utensils, dishes, serving platters, anything like that, get it out of your kitchen and put it in a backup box in the garage or in the basement or in some storage area that you have so that you have it if you're worried about getting rid of it, but it's not taking up space in your kitchen and you can have a cleaner, more organized kitchen with the things that you use more often. So I hope that was helpful and I hope to see you in the Facebook group soon. Did you love that episode or learn something useful? If so, would you do me a huge favor? My goal is to grow this podcast and help as many women as I can break free from the overwhelm so they can truly enjoy their life. The best way for me to do this is for you to leave a five-star written review on your podcast app and to share this episode with a friend or in your Instagram stories. I appreciate you being here. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you on the next episode. Take care.